This is a review of quiz 5. Uh, here the first uh, problem it asks us uh, which of the following functions are odd and select all that apply. So um, for the first one, since they're giving it to you in equation form, I would need to plug in a negative x for x. So that would be, would be negative negative x to the fifth plus two times negative x to the third plus negative x. Negative x to the fifth is still negative x to the fifth but with the negative in front now that becomes positive x to the fifth negative x to the third is negative x to the third and then times two is minus two x to the third and then plus a negative x that becomes minus x so we started with a negative x to the fifth that became positive x to the fifth we started with a two x to the third that became negative x uh, two x to the third and we started off with a positive x that became negative x since every single sign changed that means that five is going to be odd uh, for number six, they um, they give it to you in the form of um, of a graph. On a graph, an odd function would have to have origin symmetry, which would mean that it would have to look like a reflection over that line y equals x, and it clearly doesn't. So it can't be six. Uh, seven, which looks like a... Um, cubic function, if you were to draw a line like that, oops, I didn't draw it all that great. Um, that actually is a reflection. If, if you reflect the top part over the bottom part, it'd be the same. You can also check to see like uh, like certain points, like for instance here, the point 4, 1 is there. Um, oh, sorry, that's a, wait, oh, I can't read. We we're counting by twos. So 2, comma 8, if you look over here we have negative 2, negative 8. Okay, so for any point x, y, if negative x, negative y is there, then that's what makes it odd if both of the signs change. So uh, 7 would also be odd. And then for the last one, if you take um, the square root of negative x plus 2. Um, there's nothing else that can be uh, simplified there, and that's clearly not the same as that. Also, you know that square roots look like that on a graph. Square roots don't have uh, really any type of symmetry. So the answers for this one will be 5 and 7. <coughs> Which, <clears throat> which functions have the following type of end behavior? As x approaches infinity, y is going to negative infinity, so that means the right arrow would be going down. And as x is going to negative infinity, uh, f of x is also going to negative. So that's both arrows going down. So it could, whatever can happen in the middle, but this is asking basically which functions have down and down end behavior. <clears throat> well, this one is a uh, parabola that's facing down it has a negative lead so i don't even have to test anything out there i know that that's going to be one of them on this table as the x's are getting bigger the y's are getting smaller and then they get bigger again so that that tends you to believe that that parabola will be upward facing six we can tell is up upward facing and on 10 as the x's are getting bigger the y's are getting bigger also so that looks like some type of a line so the only one that it would be would be um would be the uh, number two this one here. Okay, which functions have a domain of negative four inclusive up to infinity? Uh, well, these are these are going forever. It's 
several directions with a discontinuity, so it can't be that one. <coughs> um, this looks to be a parabola because as x is getting bigger, the y is getting smaller and then bigger. Parabolas don't have a domain. Parabolas have a domain of a all real number, so it can't be that one. And, and really, like when they were giving this to you from the beginning, the first thing you should have thought is a uh, some type of a of a square root type of an even index because those are the ones that have an endpoint and then go forever in one direction. And it looks like um, eight is giving you that one. Okay, it's um, but the, see the 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 problem um, with eight though is that the endpoint there is going to be at negative two uh, comma zero based on uh, the h and the k. So there the the domain would be negative two um, to infinity. So it's it's the same type of uh, end behavior, but it's um. It's a different, it's a different uh, domain, whereas 16, this one goes to negative 4 and then continues to infinity. So this one would only be 16. Which functions have horizontal asymptotes? Number 2 is a parabola because it's squared, and parabolas don't have asymptotes. Um, this is some type of a, let's see, it's a, this is probably a fourth degree polynomial function um, it doesn't appear to have any asymptote now this is a big one that's exponential exponentials we don't have horizontal asymptotes so it's 12 the one I purposely skipped is the one that a lot of people missed it's 4 because you look at 4 and you think 4 has a um, has a horizontal asymptote but look at 4 4 is increasing that's not that doesn't have a horizontal asymptote the asymptote that, that has is vertical this one's a log so uh, the answer there would be 12. Which functions have a restriction on the domain? Okay, so you know which ones have some type of a, either a discontinuity um, or like basically which ones here do not have all real numbers. Parabolas have a domain that's all real numbers, so it can't be that one. This also looks like a parabola again as x gets bigger y gets smaller and then bigger so that's a parabola parabola has domain of all real numbers um <clears throat> this one um appears to um number four is that it, it looks like it's logarithmic and that does have a restriction on the domain it's restricted by a vertical asymptote so it should be four and then here number one it appears that there is also a vertical asymptote which affects the domain. Um, the, the domain there can be all real numbers except for that one. Um, you know, it looks like what is that? Negative four. So that would also apply. So it'd be one and four. Which functions are neither even nor odd? Okay. Well, I think seven we saw earlier in this video. Seven is the one that has origin symmetry. So that's odd, and we're looking for neither. So we're going to have no, no type of symmetry. Uh, the only thing that a parabola could be for 14 would be um, even, but then it would have to be symmetrical over the y-axis, and it's not. Um, so this is going to be neither. Um, this is a reciprocal function. If you were to look at, you know, at, at, at 1 over x, if I plug this in, it becomes 1 over negative x. That sign comes off to the side, so since it changes sign, this is odd. So it can't be this one. We know that this one is odd, so it can't be that one either. So and uh, this is all, the one number five is the one that we saw earlier also, where when we plugged in a negative, um, all the signs changed. This is where we saw. Uh, let me see here where we saw this earlier, number five. It's the same one. Um, so we saw earlier that this one was odd. So the only one that could be neither is 14. Which function has an average rate of change over the interval 1, 3? So we went over this on the practice videos. Um, what that means, rate of change means slope. These are all slope problems. And the interval means that those are the x's. So if I look at 1, comma, something, 
three comma something one comma something three comma something one comma something three comma something one comma something three comma something so when I find out what the y's are that go with those with those um with those x's I would have to put them in slope formula and see which one gives me a slope of two uh, just to save time on the video I'm gonna do these mentally if I plug in a one in the first one that gives me um see one squared negative one so that's four that's gonna be ten for a while when I plug in a three that's 15 minus 9, which is 6, plus 6 is 12. So I put that in slope formula. That gives me 10 minus 12 over 1 minus 3 is negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. So it can't be that one. When I plug in a 1, this one gives me square root of 3, and then it gives me square root of 5. And that, that's going to be irrational. That's, we don't even need to waste our time putting that into slope formula. Here, when I have a 1, 1 goes with 3. 3 goes with 7, so 3 minus 7 over 1 minus 3 is negative 4 over negative 2, that is 2. So it looks like that's going to be the answer, but just to be sure, when I put a 1, that's 2. This is 8, so that's 2 minus 8 over 1 minus 3 is negative 6 over negative 2, which is 3. So the only one that gives me what I want is, uh, is 10. What is the sum of the average rate of chains of functions 2 and 10 over the interval 1 and 3? So again, rate of change means um, slope. So when I plug in a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 3. When I plugged in 1 on this one, that gave me a 10. We did this one, we just finished doing this one when I plugged in a 3, 15 minus 9, this one gave me 12. This one here, the 1, gave me 3, the 3 gave me 7. So this slope that we found, 10 minus 12 over 1 minus 3, is negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. Over here, this is the one that ended up being the answer before, 3 minus 7, 1 minus 3. A negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. So the last thing they want us to do is just add these up. So use your fingers. 1 plus 2 equals 3. This is That's what I would have typed into the Google Forms 3. <coughs> you have to type the number in. Which functions exhibit this end behavior? As x is approaching infinity, y is approaching infinity. So... This is the one that's asking us um, if which, which have a right arrow that's pointing up. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the left arrow is doing, but which one has a right arrow that's pointing up. Number one uh, does not. As x is going to infinity, we're going down towards uh, some type of an asymptote. Uh, so it cannot be one. And uh, the way that you enter these, I think you have to go in and enter something for every single one, right? Yeah, it does exhibit, does not exhibit. So I'm not going to use those bubbles, but um, what we'll do is I'll just write in here so you can see it. This one is a no. Uh, this is a parabola that's facing down, a downward facing parabola. This would be a no. This is this is the one we saw before, number three, whereas the x's get bigger, the y's go down and up. This is an up upward facing parabola, so that would be yes. For number three, you put yes. This arrow is going up forever, so that would be a yes. For number five, this is a um, polynomial function, which we learned before. It's a negative with an odd. A negative with odd has up and down end behavior. Who knows what's happening in the middle, but it's up and down. The key is that that right arrow is going down, so that would be a no. Six is easy to tell. That one is facing up, so that would be a yes. Seven is easy. It's, it's going up. That would be a yes. This is a uh, square root function which would look something like this. It hasn't undergone any type of flips or anything. The right arrow is facing up, so that would be a yes. Nine, you can tell from looking at it, the right arrow is facing up, that would be a yes. Ten, as x is getting bigger, y is getting bigger. 
So that would be a line with a positive slope. The right arrow is facing up. That would be a yes. 11 has uh, some type of a horizontal asymptote, but who cares? Because as we go to the right, we are going up. So that would be a yes. 12 is an exponential growth. We know exponential growths look just like the one there on number 11 did. So that would be a yes. <clears throat> Uh, 13 is a table. As the x's are getting bigger, the y's are getting bigger. That's some type of a line that goes like that. The key is the right arrow is facing up, so that would be a yes. 14 is easy to look at. Right arrow is facing up. That would be a yes. 15. 15 might be a little bit tough because um, uh, you, you can't see it. But 15, actually, a reciprocal function looks like what this is up here. And if you think about it, as this number gets bigger, okay, because we want to know what happens when x is going that way, when when the, the denominator of a fraction gets bigger, the fraction actually gets smaller. Um, <clears throat> so, and if we look over here, like this is what it would look like, um, it would be going down towards that asymptote. So maybe that was a tricky one, but no, that's going to be, no, that's not going to infinity. And 16 is a little bit easier to tell that one is going to infinity. So that would be yes. Okay, uh, does each function have an absolute maximum, absolute minimum, or neither? Number one, that goes up forever, that goes down forever, so that's going to be neither. This is a downward facing parabola. Downward facing parabolas have a max. This, this is the one that we've seen before already a few times in this video. As x is getting bigger, y is getting smaller and then bigger. That's an upward facing parabola. That does have a min. That has a minimum. Uh, this one is going up forever. It's also um, going down forever. Um, all it has is a vertical asymptote, so this one's going to be neither. It does not have a max or a min. This one, we talked about it before. This has some type of up and down end behavior. It is going up forever. It is going down forever, so that would be neither. This is going up forever, but there is down here uh, a place where it stops. There is an absolute minimum, so that would be yes. This goes down, this one goes up forever, so this would be neither. And then this one you just have to know it's a um, square root, so it's some type of an endpoint going that way. That uh, point is at the bottom, so that would be a min. So this shows you all the fun. If you notice, all the functions were the same throughout, but it says uh, which is the only function that increases on this interval. Okay, you've seen that interval before. So which is the only one that increases uh, but does not exhibit the end behavior of <coughs> going from, um, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. Which one does not have that right arrow going up? Well, we just finished talking about which ones have the right arrow going up. That was what we did over here. Um, you know, talking about which ones have the right arrow going up or not. So, um, we what this question is saying is of all of the ones that do not, of all, all the ones that were no, which ones also happen to be increasing? over one comma three and it actually helps you out tells you which is the only so it's only going to be one of them it can only be one of them and it can only be the ones that had a no before so if we go back and look at the no's that was either one two five and fifteen so if you got this one right even if you were to guess you'd have a one in four chance of guessing correctly um, so they want to know which is the only one to increase over the interval 1 to 3. Well, if I look over here on number 1, between 1 and 3, let me erase some of this stuff. Between 1 and 3, this appears to be going down. So it's 
can't be I'm doing a different color so we don't bleed. So it can't be that one there. Two, which I think is gonna end up being the answer. Um if we were to plug in, uh, we'd have to find the slope. We have to find the average rate of change. Did we find that earlier with two? I feel like we did. Let's see if we can find it. I think two was one of the ones that we found. Yeah, we found that the um, that the average. Oops, no, that that's the sum. The average rate of change here was one, being that it's positive, a positive one. That means it's increasing. So if we were to go back over here. The slope here is one, which is increasing. So that seems to be the answer. But let, let's just be sure. Let's go to all the rest of these. For five, if I plug in a one and plug in a three. If I plug in a one, that's negative one. Plus two is one. Plus one is two. If I were to plug in a one, I would get a two. If I plug in a three, ooh, that's a big number. Three to the fifth. Uh, what is 3 to the 5th power? Three power five is two forty-three. So that would be two forty-three plus fifty-four is negative one eighty-nine. Plus an extra three is like negative 186. I mean, we can tell that's gonna go down. If you put that into slope formula, you would get 188 over negative two, which is negative 94. That's that's going down. That, that's a big no-no. Um, and the only other one was 15. <laughs> if we put there to see one comma something, three comma something, so one over one is one, one over three is one third. You can see that as you go from one to three, you're going down from one to one third, it's not going up. You can do slow formula if you want to verify that you would get a negative. So the only one it could be is number two. The answer for this one would be two. And then finally, Graham and Frank each kick the circle ball in the air. The height of Frank's ball is represented by this function. So this graph is Frank, and this function is Graham. And what the question wants to know is, there's a few questions here. Who kicked the ball the highest, and what was the difference? Okay, so let's see. We can tell from looking at this that Frank kicked the ball 40 feet high. To find the height of Graham, we'd have to use the formula um, negative b over 2a, but that's just going to tell me when it got to the highest point. So negative 64 over 2 times negative 16 is uh, negative 64 over negative 32, it's 2. It took 2 seconds to get to the highest point, but now I have to plug that 2 in. When I plug in the 2, see a negative 16, negative 32, 32, 64, it went up 69 feet. So Graham is the one that kicked it higher. And he kicked it higher, um, 69 minus 40, which is a difference of 29. Difference means subtract. Okay, that's the review for the quiz. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. You can contact me on Remind, or as always, as before, um, Dustin dot Klein at GCPS. 12.org. Alrighty, good luck on the test.